Same thing today. That's why I was in the back because the Lord was like, you know, that's a pretty good talk. But I just want you to share just observations. So I was trying to write down some observations. And so we'll do the same thing today. We'll see where this thing goes. I guess, you know, we're just all family here anyway. And just share, and hopefully this will help 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 us all. Um, a lot of it is some of what Sean was sharing at the break or during the worship this morning. I really feel we're living in a Hebrews 12, 26 moment. Let me read it. Hebrews 12, 26 through 29. That time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. This is the Father. Once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. Tony, this is where we're at. Um, the removing of what can be shaken. That is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God accept, acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I, uh, <clears throat> I said last week, a lot of you weren't here, so I'll just repeat it. Some of this will be a repeat. What I feel is going on in America is not judgment against primarily unbelievers. It's not shaking primarily of unbelievers, although that is obviously happening. I believe it is shaking Christians. And he's trying to move us. And when I say us, it may not apply here, but just as in a general sense. He's trying to move, when you look at statistics of the evangelical church, he's trying to move us from an apathetic position to one of passion and purpose. Um, when I say evangelical Christians, maybe you're not familiar with that. A large part of, of Americans say they're Christians. But evangelical Christian is a subset. You've heard that term before. There is a definition behind it. Basically, they believe Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation and um, that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. There's a couple other things. You go, don't all Christians believe that? You would be surprised. I'm not sure you can be a Christian and not believe some of that. But I really believe that what's happening is to awaken... Christians, true Christians, to pay attention and not just go through life, you know, in some set predetermined position, is to do a good internal evaluation. Where am I at? And then he is shaking some things. And one of the major things he's shaking is emotions. And what we depend on to go through the day that's not Holy Spirit. A lot of times we depend on the routine. We depend on the circumstances. We depend on so-and-so being there. We depend on many different things. And He has shaken us to say, I want you to depend on Me and My Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, and not these other things. I am, I've been, I've been, I, I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm an observer of, of society, but I have been very, very surprised, not here, I, this is a good group of people, we're perfect, we've got it all together, and, um, but I've been very, very surprised at the level of fear that is in Christians, and so I say that what's happening is not good, in the sense of lockdown, in the sense of people dying. That's not what I'm saying. But it has been good that it has revealed things in us that I don't think we would have noticed otherwise. And it's an opportunity that the Lord's given us to go deeper with Him, to be truly unshakable. To Okay, what is it in my life that is... That is, is in fear, hope, depression right now. Lord, come in and let's deal with this thing so that I can be a ruler of my circumstances instead of being ruled by my circumstances. 
And so I really think this is an opportunity. I think it's an opportunity for the church as a whole to... Most of the church right now, I think, when I say church, capital C, most of the church right now, I think, is just wanting to get this thing over with and go through it. And I'm right there with you. But I'm telling you, Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, has not invested in this much turmoil allowing it to happen. See, it would have happened a long time ago. Holy Spirit's kept kept these, the, the enemy, that, as you said, to steal, kill, and destroy. He's wanted to do this forever. But Holy Spirit holds them back. He just lets them do whatever He wants them to do. And He's allowed them to do this much because He's invested in us growing and looking more like the bride. See, Holy Spirit's major job is this. It's to turn the body of Christ, who's ever a Christian, into the bride of Christ. He's not just trying to get us saved and then we eventually get to heaven. Holy Spirit's job, salvation is the first point, but Holy Spirit's job is to turn the body of Christ into the bride of Christ. I don't know all that the bride's going to look like, but they're going to have at least four P's here. First of all, purity. Passion. Know their purpose of how to walk with the bridegroom, Jesus, and a power to do it. And so a lot of this, what he's doing, he's going, listen, there's some areas that you are dominated by that you're supposed to be dominated by Jesus. And the screws are being turned. I mean, they are being turned. And I know in myself, I have to, those of you that are on the Live Close devotional text, I talk about rest all the time. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit more today maybe because this is a big, big, big deal. We've got to pass this thing. Or He will allow something to come back around to teach us again. There is no automatic promotion from the first grade to the second grade in the kingdom of God. You just have to repeat the first grade again. Hopefully I'm at least up to middle school. But who knows where I'm at. And so... See that, and so this is, but this is what I'm going to tell you. As you push into the Father, push into Jesus, He is going to pull all these strings together. It's going to work out. I'm not saying we won't lose some stuff, but in the end, His kingdom is going forward. It is going to happen. Opposite of steal, kill, and destroy, John 10, 10. I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. He is teaching us, instead of just giving us life, listen to me, this is a big point. He is not just giving us life, He is teaching us how to appropriate and get a hold of life that's in heaven in Him and walk in it. See, if something's just given it, to, given to us, we can't pass it on. But if we have learned how to receive it from Him, it's still a gift, but if we've learned how to receive from Him... And, and, and get victory over normal circumstances, we can then pass that thing on. Because we know the steps to get there. And so he is teaching each one of us in here how to be overcomers in the midst of a tough, tough situation. The biggest thing I find in my own life, I'll just talk about myself, the biggest thing I find in my own life when I hear things during the week and get frustrated or hear some insanity, okay, even in Christians, is I, re, I, my first response is to react instead of to respond. Now, I don't want to play too much games here, but react is like, oh my gosh, blah, 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 and I react a lot. Respond is going, okay, Holy Spirit, what's the right response in this situation? One of the biggest things He's doing in me, maybe He's doing it in you, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit of self-control that starts with my mouth. As James says, if you can control your tongue, you all know the verse, you can control your whole life. And there's a lot of this that He's, he's taken us through to go, don't react, Respond. As I've said many times, the, the, the tool that helps me the most is, I, is to count to three. Wait three seconds. 
And I do that a lot anymore. Under the table or with somebody else, I'm going... <laughs> it does make all the difference. There's something about three seconds that, okay, all right, I've, I've got enough to try to, to try to do this a little different. Um, and this is simple, but there's the test that the, uh, oh, what's that club? The speaking club that starts with an R. It doesn't matter. The Rotary Club. They've got a, a great thing for a test for speaking. Three questions. And I'm usually doing this when I'm going like this. Is it necessary, what I'm about to say, is it kind, and is it true? Usually by the time I get through necessary, well, no, not really. Is it kind? I don't know, that's debatable. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Boy, is it true. <laughs> Usually I end up not saying a lot. But what I'm finding in that when I'm doing that, I'm now learning to contr- rule or walk in the Spirit over my circumstances instead of my circumstances walking over me, ruling over me. Is this connecting with anybody? Because when you see the headlines on TV or headlines on Facebook or wherever it is on podcasts, or, they are written to get you to react. And so that's why, that's why sometimes we just have to, we just have to realize what's going on. Um, This one thing I know is I want to make sure I exit this thing, and it's going to end. It will. Some, it won't be normal like it was before. It never is. But whatever the normality is, I don't want to walk through this thing and the Lord show me after six months of this. He said, you know, you just endured. You just wrote it out, and you really didn't learn what I wanted you to learn in your character and in your outlook on life. Man, that would be terrible. Because I'll, then I know he's going to... I failed the grade. And he's going to come back and deal with this thing. Because what he's wanting us to do on the other side, or even now, is to be someone <clears throat> that we can't be shaken... You know that parable, the waters come and there's a house built on the sand. And that house gets blown away. But the one that's written, that's on the rock is not. That's what's happening. We are living this right now. And some of my house is built on sand. Nobody's perfect. And so what I need to do, go, okay, let's let that part just get washed away. <clears throat> there's a scripture that talks about um, at the judgment seat of Christ, He's going to test our works here on earth. And some of it's going to, and He's going to put an all-consuming fire to it, whatever that means. And then some of it's going to be wood, hay, and stubble. And some of it's going to be gold, silver, precious stones. Do you realize you can ask Him to do that now? Wake up in the morning and go, Father, let me know now the areas of my life that are wood, hay, and stubble. Let's burn them up now to increase the opportunities for gold, silver, and precious stones down the road. That's intense, isn't it? Just say, just, 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 just do it now. Because it says you can judge yourself for the Holy Spirit. And so... I just want to encourage you, this is going to end. And all the strings are going to be pulled together. And we're going to see, and there is going to be a new normality for the church, for us. But we, as we stay close to Holy Spirit, we're going to exit this thing more aware of what's going on in the Spirit around us. 
We're going to exit this thing more aware of what's in us and what's changed. Is this hitting home with anybody? Don't just write it out. Just say, Holy Spirit, let's just do this thing now. It's the, the quickest way from A to B is a straight line. <clears throat> Some notes I had here. The Lord wants to increase the supernatural in us right now. And how the increase in the supernatural comes is to rest. My background, a lot of the supernatural was praying tongues real fast, lay hands on people, do this, do that, do that. And there's a place for that. But more and more, as we're just resting in Him, supernatural things are happening that we could have never made happen. Stop trying. These are just things I wrote down. Stop trying to hold on to things out of insecurities. Some of this can be relationships. I've had some relationships tried through this thing. And I finally just backed off and said, I'm just going to walk in love. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to walk in the supernatural. These relationships are in your hands. Here's a good one. These are just random thoughts. Are these all right? Resist the need to know. As Sean said, the fear of missing out. The problem with, there's so, it's just like a fire hose in all of the media outlets right now, just water and news coming out. Well, I gotta know, I gotta know. If you're like me, I gotta know because I'm scared that I gotta know everything because I gotta protect myself. Instead of trusting, Holy Spirit's got your back on this one. He'll 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 take care of it. Here's another one. If you're around a lot of Christians, or even it's a given for unchristians, that are what's the word? Anxious. Don't try to be right. I've never seen so many people, if you touch on certain subjects, it's like you lit a nuclear bomb. Am I the only one? Oh, my gosh. Somebody said something, I don't remember who it was, about offenses earlier. It's just bad. And it's not God. And it's sin. Let's just be blunt. How many people's getting offended? We should be able to amicably discuss difference of opinions without killing each other. But this is what's happening. Listen to me. These people are reacting this way. The reason they're reacting that way is because they do not, listen to me, they do not have a solid walk with Holy Spirit. Their world is crumbling because their world was made up of certain opinions and viewpoints and judgments. And now they look like they're falling apart, so their identity and their self-worth is falling apart. Their house is built on sand instead of a rock. So remember that and have compassion and go, their world is falling apart. They have to, this has to be true. Because their, their, their world is not built on the eternal word of God It's built on something else. I mean, you could pick some opinion. So listen, have compassion because their world's falling apart. Their identity's in that and realize if they get out of this and their opinion's right, they have a stronghold in their life that's going to be very hard to break down the road. Their identity is tied up in this opinion instead of being a son of God or a daughter of God. You understand what I'm saying? And so just listen. That's about all you can do. Am am I speaking the truth here? And so when I want to rise up and say, no, I'm right, guess what? My identity is tied up into this. This is the thing. Learn to recognize when people actually want your opinion. 
which I've not found anybody in a long time. Most people ask you so that as soon as you get through, they can give their opinion. And the sooner that you get through, the better. Okay, that's all right. I mean, that's just human nature. But realize this isn't a two-way conversation here. This is just me listening to you. And that's okay. There's some value in that. There are, mate, every once in a while, there used to be, I'm not, I haven't seen anybody recently, that is actually teachable and they want your opinion. Well, give your opinion then. But most people have to give their opinion because their whole world, that's what it's built on. Let me say today, no matter what happens in this world, God's going to take care of you. It doesn't matter. If the communists take over, if the socialists take over, if the far right takes over, Jesus still has to put food on your table. It might not be as much fun, but he's still going to take care of you. And you can still grow in knowing God. You can still grow in experiencing Him. You can still walk in His prosperity. See how long I've gone here. Oh, here's another one. Oh, man, this one hurts. Yo, y'all want any more or y'all glutton for punishment? How many masochists we have in here? I'll do two more. Control yourself, not others. I, it sounds cute and pithy. That is hard to do, isn't it? We have no right to control anybody else. We have The only right we have is to control ourselves. Here's the last one I wrote down. I hope this has been helpful. I'm doing the best I can here. Rest in people's presence. Man, there's some relatives here that this is going to be, it's going to take a lot of the fruits of the Holy Spirit this week to do that. It's quiet in here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's not so much for them, but it's for us. I don't have to work to fix them. They're his sons, not mine. I mean, I know they may be physically your son, but still in the big picture of things. I don't have to be responsible for them. I don't have to run this conversation or meeting. Does that set you free in a certain way? I'm telling you, Holy Spirit is determined to turn every Christian into the bride of Christ. Now that might be a theology you're not used to. There is a difference between the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. I'm not sure I totally understand all of it, but not everyone that becomes saved moves on to being able to walk in purity, passion, power, and purpose with Him. Because they're just not willing to do it. It's the difference between being saved and being a Lord, being saved and being a, being a believer and a being a disciple. I'm telling you, Holy Spirit, He's going to work on that till the day every one of us dies. That's His primary assignment. His primary assignment is to turn the body of Christ into the bride that has eyes only for Jesus. And so He'll use us along the way in other people's lives, but He's going to get it. He'll, he'll, he'll work on it. So we can rest if we have some weird relatives, weird employees, weird co-workers, just enjoy them as much as you can. Avoid them if you can. But he's going to take care of them. Amen? And allow him to work on us to all sand be gone, only on the rock, and come through this with the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just love you. And we just glorify you. And we just honor you. I think y'all said you were going to close in a song, didn't you?